Please, please, please. My name is Paul Downs. I am a commercial barrister at Quadrant Chambers and I practice in commercial fraud. That doesn't mean that I defraud people. It means that I practice in legal disputes that have an element of fraud in them. And my Qubit talk is called What is Tracing? I'm going to try and tell you everything you need to know about tracing in 10 minutes. Tracing is a process by which a claim against one asset can be transferred to a different asset. So, for example, when I was about 12 years old, I was given a bicycle. It wasn't just any bicycle, it was a chopper bicycle. And a chopper bicycle exactly had big handlebars and you'd lie, sit back. Uh, and it wasn't just any chopper bike. It was a five-gear chopper bike. Most chopper bikes were three gears, this was five gears. And it was my, it was pride it was purple, it was beautiful, and I parked it one day outside a supermarket. But when I came out, the bike was gone. It had been stolen. No, I know, I know. So anyway, uh, assume that I want to recover my bike, or at least get its money's worth from the thief. Assume I can track down the thief. <laughs> assume I have high-powered lawyers who are going to act at my disposal to recover the proceeds. Now, if the thief has sold the bike, let's say they've sold it for £100, tracing is the process of saying, well, no longer can I identify the bike, but I will trace my claim through into the £100 sale proceeds of the bike. It's to be distinguished from following. Following would be following the bike into the hands of somebody who bought it from the thief. Tracing is taking the proceeds of the bike. Following is where the same asset is followed through different people. Tracing is a different asset in the hands of the same person. And if you want to remember it, think of Think of my example of the bike and following the bike as it's passed from person to person or tracing that there's a picture of a bike and you put tracing paper over and you trace an outline of the image. The tracing is not the original, it, but it's derived from the original. Now, a few basic points. Number one, tracing is not a cause of action. People talk about tracing claims, that's not correct. Tracing is an evidential process. Tracing is something you do to establish your claim, but there is no such thing as a tracing claim. Secondly, tracing has a set of rules when you can and when you cannot assert a claim over a replacement asset. And thirdly, and somewhat unhelpfully, there are two different sets of rules for tracing. There are common law rules if your claim is a common law, and there are equitable rules that apply if your claim is equitable. Now, Four main situations in which you will want to establish a claim that will involve tracing. Firstly, and most importantly, is a proprietary claim. That is to say you're seeking a declaration or an order for a return of an asset. That is the most powerful type of claim that you can use for two reasons. Firstly, the insolvency of the person holding the asset is immaterial. Your claim will beat the claims of unsecured creditors. Secondly, there's no limitation period. You can wait decades, and if you can establish a proprietary claim, you can still make the claim. The second type of claim is a personal claim against an individual who's become mixed up in a breach of trust. A claim against that person as a constructive trustee, such as dishonest assistance or knowing receipt. If you're going to mount a claim in relation to constructive trusteeship, you may need to show that that person dealt with your asset. And that may mean tracing through to that person's hands. The third sort of claim that's very important is a claim in restitution or unjust enrichment, like money paid by mistake, or where a contract is void and so the consideration has failed and you want to get your money back. That is a common law claim. And the fourth type of claim is conversion. So the example with my bicycle, that's a chattel, so you can make a claim for under the Tort Wrongful Interference with Goods Act. I can say I want the bike back or I want damages for your wrongful handling of the bike. A proprietary claim can be either at equity or common law, but most typically in fraud cases, one's doing that as a matter of equity. And so you apply the equitable rules of tracing. When one's talking about liability as a constructive trustee, one again, that's an equitable claim, so one is applying the equitable rules of tracing.
Unjust enrichment, on the other hand, or restitution, is a common law claim. So one has to apply the common law rules of tracing. And equally, conversion is a common law claim. So one's applying the common law rules of tracing. So what are the rules and principles? Well, there are five of them that you need to know. Firstly, at equity, before you can invoke the equitable rules of tracing, you have to establish equitable jurisdiction. That is to say, you have to establish by some means that the legal and the equitable ownership of the asset has been divided. The most typical example is a case of a breach of trust, money in a solicitor's client account or something like that. Or in a company law situation, all company assets are held effectively on trust. So a claim against the director, there will always be equitable jurisdiction. But what about fraud? Fraud can be more problematic. There was a saying that the thief with the bag of cash does not hold it on constructive trust because there's no equitable jurisdiction, there's no division of legal and beneficial title. But in fraud, you can establish equities jurisdiction by claiming rescission of the transaction, which will revest the beneficial interest back in the victim, but the legal title remains with the fraudster. And there you have equities jurisdiction. That's the first point. The second point is that at equity you can trace through a mixed fund. That's very important because if you're tracing the proceeds of fraud, you'll want to trace it through the banking system, through accounts and clearing systems. And at equity that doesn't provide a problem. You can trace through a mixed fund. Thirdly, when one's tracing through a mixed fund at equity, the wrongdoer is presumed to spend their own money first. So if your money goes into a bank account, and money comes out of that bank account, the fraudster spends money on a new car or a holiday or something, that is presumed not to be your money. He spends his own money first. And the fourth principle at equity is the principle of the lowest intermediate balance. So take an example. Thousand pounds is stolen from somebody and it goes into a bank account and is mixed with other money and the balance goes up to 5,000 pounds. But then the fraudster spends and dissipates money, which takes the balance down to 500 pounds before it goes back up to 1,000 pounds. Can you claim, as a proprietary claim, the 1,000 pounds that's left at the end? The answer is no. Your claim is restricted to the lowest intermediate balance, the 500 pounds. Now, there has been a suggestion recently that you might, in certain situations, be able to backwards trace. That is to say, to anticipate the money coming back into the account and claim more than the intermediate balance. But the parameters for backward tracing are very much uh, undeveloped. And the fifth principle is that at common law you cannot trace through a mixed fund. So if you're seeking to make a claim in restitution for money paid by mistake and the money has gone through the bank clearing system, you cannot trace your claim. You cannot establish that the recipient has been unjustly enriched at your expense. So that is tracing in 10 minutes. Thank you for watching.